Hello, Jill. How are you? Uh, I'm fine. Glad to be here today. Okay. Hey, let's talk about this 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 wonderful dress here you have here. Well, uh, let's talk about that. This dress comes out of a, pro a long process of, with different steps to it. Uh huh. And I actually I don't see it as a dress anymore. I really see it as a kind of sculpture that has more of a historical significance. Uh -huh. But that was not my intention when I started this. Uh, the erotic drawings here which are sort of uh, either painted or printed onto gauze, this kind of thin material like this, evolved out of a whole series of sketches that I had done of, of men, nude sketches that I've done of men, of men, and I must have about 2,000 sketches. What I began to do is I began to transfer the sketches to acetate with paint, and I painted on the back of the acetate, and what I was looking for is a memory of what happened as I was looking at these guys and sketching them, trying to remember, is it sexy, what is, what is, what is that, that is appealing or not appealing, and somehow in translating the drawing, which was much more mundane, to something, to another medium, it, it heightened the emotional quality of the work. The next thing I did was to then transfer it to the back of plexiglass. These look like they're paintings under plexiglass, but actually they're on the back. And the reason that I do that is that I'm very interested in the way we, we remember things visually. You know, we, we, people, if you ask, what is reality? First thing, you, you call up an image in your mind, this is reality. And when you think of a sexual reality, it has a specific kind of thing. You know, you can think of pornography or just all of these different sexual symbols. And they have changed over time. And as I began to experiment with the imagery, with this, with this imagery, it also changed my whole understanding of my own sexuality. And uh, to see that what I'm, as I began to investigate more, what I might have considered to be sexy before was more imaginary, and that attraction is somewhere in between the imaginary and the real. Now what happened is I began to print these images actually on other materials. This is, what, this is an image printed on, on a, a piece of rice paper and then I've sort of uh, embroidered into it. But I, I want to make money. I was trying to figure out how can I make money? Uh, and, and what I began to do is to put these erotic images on underwear. And I, and I did it with, um, with dyes. And, and so they're fast dyes. And, and I had to learn something about that technique. And then, and then I was showing them to a friend. And he said, you know, why don't you put the gauze, why don't you print it on the gauze? And then put it on... Uh, Put it on something else uh, that would uh, have an interactive design pattern. And so the first thing of this that I did was I would go to Goodwill and I'd get these old shirts that had these very kind of ornate kind of uh, prints. And then I would take this imagery stuff, put it, dye it on a gauze. This is all hand dyed. And then I would embroider it into the shirt. So what you would see, you would see the shirt that was one thing. And then all of a sudden, this material began to be, uh, to act as another medium, almost like paint. And then, uh, and then for this show specifically, I created this because I was thinking of what happened to me in my own life. And since I grew up in the 1950s, in the 1950s, the formal prom dress. And this is an original antique 1950s prom dress. And the, and the whole thing of the 1950s. So this 1950 prom dress? Yes, this is this is a, this. If you look, this is the original uh, way it looked oh. all over. It's what coral. is that lace? It's, oh, um, is that? Uh, it is lace. It is. And and actually, if I pick up the skirt, you see lace. But also the fact that it has like a petticoat, and a hoop skirt, and all this stuff. Very uh, very. Oh, Even though people were sexually oh, no. active, straight people, <laughs> very hard to get there. You understand uh, what I'm you saying? You better behave clothing, yourself. <laughs> clothing, well, yes, you better behave yourself. And so, yeah. and so what I realized is the prom dress with the pearls and the corsage represents one, one understanding of what sex is. Sex is marriage. A man and a woman together, yeah. this is what you're supposed to do. In some way that was imprinted in my own thinking. And then over time it became permissible to have a more sexualized imagery. 
And you know, I, I, it's, it's very, my story is a very funny story because I, I kept on going to therapy and so I really, um, I was married and I didn't know whether I was queer, I didn't know and I spoke to my wife about it and I began to go to therapy and talk about it. And since I never acted on those feelings, it was all a kind of mystery, I seemed to be a straight person, like 80% straight. <laughs> so what happened over time is that I realized that the, that the even though I was trying to be a good family man, let's say, mm -hmm. it just wasn't working. And then uh, at a certain point, everything sort of fell apart in my life. And, and then I began to investigate it even more, went, stopped going to that therapist, and then began to um, really... Uh, Really live a, a, a queer life. True self. Well, that's very. Right. It's complicated when you say true self because okay. that is a much more uh, interesting issue because even within gay culture, true self is very complex. Yes. Because there's all the symbols that people stick to. Essentially, what happened is that I then began to paint this imagery and I superimposed this kind of liberated sexual imagery onto the antique dress, and what you get is, is a kind of political statement rather than an erotic statement. Uh -huh. You know, uh, what happened in the 50s was permissible, but what can happen now is very different. And people, you know, people get married, for the same sex people can get married, for example. They can, they can look and enjoy, uh, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a revolution in the way men look. And how uh, I always feel that photography is much more advanced even than painting, because there's a there's a erotic quality. And what I learned in this process is, for me personally, I began to understand what I really think is sexy. Mm -hmm. But the most important piece about this piece is it is about the change in sexual mores. Mm -hmm. It is very political. This is this could not I could not have done this. 15 years ago, wow. and had the same impact. So I what see. happened is I was moving along in my life like this, and all of a sudden his, history hit me like that. And, and, it's, and it's really powerful. It, this sculpture, I call it a sculpture, has advanced on its own. Mm -hmm. And so I don't have to almost promote it because it's, it's, it, it is its own statement. I feel like I'm just like the messenger, and I feel like the luckiest person in the world. Yeah. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. That's <laughs> You're sticking to it, eh? That's yes, right. It's a very nice piece. Your work is beautiful. Thank you. I love it. I love it on the uh, the garment, the antique uh, antique dress here. It's a prom dress. It's a very important. Yeah. yeah actually, it's like a, you know, like people would wear white gloves. It's my guys mm -hmm. would wear. You know, this really is. This really is a time that it really. I love the bad. colors you you've chosen. Yes. I love the colors. It's, it's, it's not colors that hit you. They're very subtle, very subtle. Well, the thing, love it. the thing I feel about that all of this stuff, what's happened with this work, it's all integrated, and and it is the way I feel about myself. And all of the different pieces of my life, all of a they're integrating into one person, one imperfect person. Mm -hmm. And and I think the desire to not recognize my queerness was to be perfect, to be the perfect husband, the perfect teacher, the perfect, which was also part of the 50s. Everybody in the 50s had to be like Father Knows Best, oh. the perfect person. Yeah. And there was just no... Ozzie and Harriet. That's right, Ozzie and Harriet, <laughs> that's right. There was no dysfunction, they never had to go to therapy, Ozzie knew what to do, Father Knows Best what to, what to right. do. I didn't know what to do. That was My three sons. Uh. My, right, exactly. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs>